So I'm going to talk about cardiogenic pulmonary edema and non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema and the differences between these two. You see there are two lungs here. The left side is uh, a lung that uh, is attacked by pulmonary edema, means that uh, excess fluid. And the, le the right side is uh, uh, non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, or also known as ARDS that formerly used. Now let's go to left side. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema basically can be, uh, can occur by uh, excess pressure in uh, left atrial and also a left side of the heart means that there is some kind of backward failure and due to that, uh, this uh, backward failure, uh, you know that the left heart, imagine left heart is here and left atrium is here, then left atrium, when uh, pressure inside the left atrium goes up, then this pressure can, uh, can uh, uh, go backward to the pulmonary vein and to, from pulmonary veins uh, comes to the lung and inside the lung you see that uh, here is uh, final venules and these arterioles. So all of the, uh, all of the pressure uh, can be delivered here and therefore pressure here goes up, means that uh, pulmonary capillary wedge pressure increased due to backward failure from the heart. Therefore, startling forces now uh, is impaired. I'm not going to talk about uh, startling forces in this session, but uh, uh, we know that the starting forces uh, is uh, balanced inside the microvasculature that uh, due to that uh, forces, uh, uh, the excess, let's say, excess amount of uh, interstitial fluid and whatever left over here in interstitium uh, can, be get by, can, uh, can be collected by the lymph and uh, special proteins by the lymph and then goes to the uh, circulation. But here, uh, due to impaired, here due to impaired uh, uh, permeability that's caused by uh, pressure, backward pressure from heart, uh, now the patient is experiencing some kind of uh, excess amount of fluid and accumulation of fluid here in his interstitium. Therefore, interstitial fluid now is uh, full of. Uh, plasma, plasma proteins, and uh, whatever inside plasma. So uh, at first blush, the lymph can uh, compensate for that, but uh, you see that the uh, lymph, you know that, that lymph is uh, responsible for gathering the plasma mat materials from uh, interstitium. But now due to uh, this uh, attack and the attack of uh, plasma, uh, lymph cannot compensate for that. Therefore, interstitial fluid now is full of uh, plasma and plasma proteins, and therefore the distance between alveoli and microvasculature now is full of uh, plasma. Therefore, oxygen cannot reach alveoli. And when oxygen cannot reach alveoli, the patient now experiences uh, some kind of hypoxemia and dyspenia. Therefore, patient, uh, when lies down, uh, experiences mm, more preload and more end diastolic volume in the heart, therefore even more pressure inside the uh, pulmonary vessels and pulmonary capillary wedge pressure also again uh, overwhelmed by, the, by, by lying down. Therefore, uh, needs two pillows uh, to overcome by this problem. We call it uh, orthopnea. But rather than this, the patient also experiences uh, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea during night. Means that the patient uh, thinks that there's no oxygen uh, while there's uh, enough amount of oxygen delivered by the uh, flow, blood flow. But this amount of oxygen cannot reach alveoli due to edema. So this is all about cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Now let's go to the right side. Uh, while we're talking about uh, uh, edema, this side is non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, also known as ARDS. Uh, originally, ARDS can be uh, can be uh, can occur by two problems. One is aspiration, means that the problem is with airways. Another one is inside the vessels, and that is sepsis. 
and due to sepsis or aspiration, we have some kind of epithelial loss. You see the integrity of epithelium lost. And uh, because of that, the patient uh, uh, experiences uh, accumulation of fluid inside the epithelial cells. Means that the normally uh, the amount of uh, plasma that uh, infiltrates interstitial fluid uh, should be collected by the lymph. But now, due to epithelial loss, uh, uh, a considerable amount of plasma fluid now accumulates inside the alveoli. Means that plasma proteins now going up inside the alveoli, therefore surfactant scaping. Due to this proteinosis, this is a plasma protein. And uh, because surfactant goes away, now alveoli collapsed. And when alveoli collapsed, the patient experiences some kind of atelectasis, means that uh, some, uh, even, even a lobe or some lobes of uh, lung uh, collapsed. And uh, due to this atelectasis, no longer oxygen can go from blood inside the alveoli, inside the airway. Therefore, we call it some kind of shunting, the phenomenon shunting. And finally, this is a cause for hypoxemia. The same problem happens in, the, uh, in, in children, so we call it hyaline membrane, uh, hyaline membrane disease, and uh, has a, a ground glass view in X-rays. And this was all about non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema and cardiogenic pulmonary edema.